Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me start by thanking the organizers. It's a tremendous honor uh, to be part of this. Uh, and I want to wish Ofer happy birthday. <laughs> um, so the, I want to talk about log geometry, which of course is a subject that Gaber has had a tremendous uh, influence on. Uh, in particular, I want to talk about uh, how to think about Hochschild and uh, cyclic homology. for log schemes. That's my title. Um, so let me give a little background. Um, well, um, so let me start. So uh, let me consider a ring homomorphism. And uh, I think in this area, one has to s people consider non-commutative rings and things like this. So, I'll, but let me just uh, stick with commutative rings with unit uh, for now. Um, normally, you don't have to say that, but uh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, all right. So, what's the Hochschild uh, complex? Uh, so it's. Uh, you just take the tensor products. Um, uh, like this, and there's some formulas. Uh, let me just write one of them here. So this is tensor product over R. Um, so you can. Um, And there's, uh, well, you can write more complicated formulas if you want uh, for the higher terms. Um, but anyway, so you take the normalized complex and you get uh, uh, some complex. And uh, so complex, because I'm in the commutative setting, complex of A modules. By the way, you, this is a simplicial object, yes? Uh, yes. Um, so. Uh, you get a chain complex that is the indexing of the differential Doyle degree by one? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a homological versus cohomological issue that's sort of pervasive. Yes. Is that your question? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, but it looks like a complex for simply cohomology. Well, that also, uh, yeah, I mean, if you put in the. Uh, yeah, but because you sort of uh, change the order. Uh, I think it's okay, but. Uh, <laughs> well, you can define whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the auction, the, the auction thing is much older. It goes back to the 50s. Uh, that I was, uh, yes. Made it for buying modules of a non necessarily associative, non necessarily commutative set. Yes. So, so this is a special case of this, where A is a bimodule of the set. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um. But anyway, this is a, a complex where the so viewed cohomologically it is a negative degree. Yes. It's a, you can either view it as a. a Cohomological negative degree, sorry, what? You put the star up, so it must be cohomology. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's bad notation. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you should, I mean, homological indexing, I think, is uh, the standard. Um, OK. Um, so let me, uh, the Hochschild homology. Is uh, and now I will follow the. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. This. Maybe I'll write it like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you take the homology of this uh, complex, and I, yeah. 
Okay, and uh, now uh, you can also think of this as taking the tor over a tensor a of a with a. At least when a is flat over r. Well, I think if a is not flat over r, yeah, then I have some that uh, I can put. A, I think people, some people want to put a derived there, or and others don't. So. Uh, Yeah. So yeah. 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 So if if it's not flat, then I have to do more up there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, okay. So this was generalized uh, to schemes by uh, Weibel and uh, Geller. Um, Um, so uh, let me set up the notation. So um, let me say S is spec R. Um, and then you have X over S is an S scheme. Um, and then, uh, well, you can define, you can just take for any affine open inside X, uh, you can send that to this complex. Maybe I'll omit the Okay, so this is a complex of pre sheaves. This doesn't localize uh, well, so you have to be a little careful. Um, but then you can sheafify it um, to get. Uh, some complex of sheaves. And that would be different from writing structural sheaf O X for your A up there. Um, why, why don't you decorate tensor A to X over O X and X Just do it uh, well. In the, in the flat case, uh, then you replace X plus X by you have seen. Repeat the question. That, that <laughs> 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 or extensor right away. So, okay. so this what you put here. Yeah, I mean that's. So it'll be important for me that I have this actual complex. So. Uh, Why is it important? Well, it'll. It's. Uh, <laughs> 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 so you just do the risk uh, the certification. You can do the risky. Uh, you can also work with the Italian topology. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Anyway, the homology localizes well. Anyway. The homology localizes well, so that's that's not so that's not a big issue. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So uh, so then you define the Hock shield homology of X over S. Well, you have the sheaves. So let me write them like this. Um, and. Uh, Is that better? Okay. Um, okay, and then uh, yeah. Okay, then we get to the convergence issues, like in Schultz's talk about unbounded complexes. Yes, there's, yeah. So, unless, so of course you can use Pazin style definition. But anyway, as, as it was, there are some cases where people use things which are not hyper complete. I don't know if this is right, it's as sophisticated as this, but it's, the question is not in which sense you take the hyper cohomology that it is with Pazin style and So, I think here, um, Maybe you don't have a problem here because the commodity sheaves are quasi coherent, so I ah, think okay, that so everything uh, is yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. is okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then uh, but uh, well there's also a I'll talk more about this towards the end, uh, the cyclic homology. Um, but let me write sort of the axioms up. 
Um, and there's that notation. OK, so uh, there's a bunch of properties. And uh, um, I'll write them once, and then So are you going to tell us about the cyclic homology? I'll say something about that uh, later. But let me first uh, go through some, some basic properties that I want uh, to be true, because then I want to talk about log schemes and uh, some stacks, and uh, so, so yeah, so we'll get there. Um, OK, so the first point uh, is that this uh, uh, this is a commutative uh, graded in the commutative, graded commutative uh, algebra. Um, yeah, uh, well. It's the sign convention is like for the Durham complex. Yeah, but yeah. is it element of the odd degree of the square zero? The element of odd degree is square zero. I don't know. Is that is that uh, yes? I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Who said uh, yes? Scholze. <laughs> 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 OK, um, so the second is that there's a, it carries a differential uh, called the con operator. Um, um, and uh, with this, um, so. So this is a uh, commutative differential graded algebra. Um, let me conti continue over here. Um, so yeah, so then the next point is that if you look at B0, um, this is an R linear derivation. And so that, by the universal property of the Durand complex, uh, you get and a map here uh, uh, like that, um, which is an isomorphism morphism if x over s is smooth. And I'll write this here. This is usually referred to as the Hochschild, Kost, and Rosenberg isomorphism. Okay. Um, all right, then there are some other things. So uh, there's something called the SBI sequence. And I haven't told you what cyclic homology is, but. Uh, uh, No. Uh, <laughs> okay, and, so, and again here, so this is a uh, homological notation, so it's the m minus 1 up here. Um, yeah. And uh, finally, the last property, which uh, with the third term, did you write that as an HH or an HC? HCM, HCM minus two. Okay. And uh, let's say X is affine, and uh, X over S is smooth. So then there's a spectral sequence, which I'll just draw in a picture. Uh, an E1 uh, homological notation. 
um, and this converges to the cyclic homology. Um, and uh, if R is a Q-algebra, then you have uh, so-called lambda operations, uh, which makes this uh, degenerate. Uh, so this degenerates. Can you still need smooth? Um, uh, so X is smooth here, yeah. Uh -huh. and and now R is a Q algebra. And R is a Q algebra. Um, then this gives de de degenerates and gives uh, uh, the cyclic homology. So you have the so-called what? Uh, uh, operations you have? Uh, Lambda operations? Lambda. Yeah. Uh, no, R, R is my base. Uh, S is spec R. S. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then this is, uh, well, you read off uh, from the picture there, uh, so you get uh, differentials mod uh, boundaries, and then you have a sort of direct sum. I is at least 1, and then H M minus 2I Duram X over S. So the generates means at E1. At E2, I think. Right? You go to the next page. This is E1 page. And that's, that's why I draw the spectral sequence like this, because then you'll see. Uh, In the SBI sequence, why is it called the B SBI? Because well, one of the Bs and one of them is I of these maps here, and I can't remember. Uh, <coughs> but the B goes from, uh, in your convention, from HH to itself, and you don't have uh, what you have here is H A going to H C going to H C. There's no map from. No, the, so in the definition of the cyclic homology, there's a map, uh, yeah. which is a B. Yeah, yeah. But you're not going to tell us about the cyclic homology. If there's time later, I will. But uh, <laughs> well, I mean. It's a double <laughs> complex. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a double complex with. Uh, yeah. So it's an explicit double complex. Yeah, it's an explicit double complex. Well, okay, I, I think that's the... <laughs> well, I can do it. I mean, th there seemed to be a request. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. So, what is the cyclic come up? Well, I'll give the flavor at least. I mean, I'd have to write out all the maps to really say what it is. But, uh, just give us a hint. yeah, yeah. So, okay, so here's... Nick, here's John <laughs> Okay, so you have some picture like this. So you just put the Hog shield complex in. So this is a double complex. Uh, so this is just copies of the Hog shield complex with shifts. And then you have maps here, um, which I think. I didn't label them here, but I believe they're usually called B. And they're built out of the, the cyclic. The it has nothing to do with the B of the Carnac. Yes. Uh, it, it does, yeah. So, I mean, where did this thing, the B, wherever I drew it, uh, comes out of this extra structure, the cyclic structure. And here you, I mean, this just comes from the permutation action on the uh, self tensor products. Is this in the sense of the lower left quadrant? Uh, yes, and then uh, you have to take the total complex and. Uh, total complex in the sense of. Uh, is it finite in its total degree or, or we have to. Yes, uh, uh, Yes, so I guess the way I like to think of this is as an object in uh, C of mod R. Sort of indexed by the nav. So think of this as a projective system, I think, in sort of this direction. Um, and then you have the sort of Huxfield terms uh, sitting like this. I mean, can you draw the so PQ time? I mean, where are the degrees? Uh, the degrees. Um, 
Uh, let's, yeah, I'd have to. Let me, let me, I'll get it wrong if I try to. I mean, there's a sign. Uh, yeah, you mean when you take this, the total complex? Is it? So let's see. So this way? Is that what you're saying? This way, this way. Yeah, yeah, OK. That way. Good, thank you. So it's finite in every degree. Yeah, you mean in each term? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so there's no problem whether to take dikes and dikes. No, you don't have to. Uh, but you still have to worry about the issue of taking cohomology. Uh, yes. and, and now you've lost. This map is not a linear, so you have to uh, the horizontal maps. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So uh, well, let me skip. So what I want to explain uh, is how to do this for log schemes. Um, also, the, the other maps are only R linear. All the maps are R linear. So this is a double complex of R modules. Okay. The way, I, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, generalize this to log schemes. Um, which is uh, actually, so I guess let me make a remark here, which is uh, there's an alternate approach um, which is due to Rognes, um, which is, I mean, this is somehow this story is clo closely related to the story of the cotangent complex. And for the log cotangent complex, there's kind of two things you can do. There's a Gavar cotangent complex, and then you can do this thing with stacks. So uh, the Rognes approach is uh, more like the Gavar cotangent complex, and I'll explain uh, sort of the stack approach. Um, so um, let's see. So um, but let me just uh, make a sort of one small remark just to uh, get started. Um, so let me just, so you can think about this for the log point. Uh, so this is uh, spec k, k star, a copy of the natural numbers, just mapping to 0, spec k, k star. Um, and if you write out, so the Durham complex in this case, is just uh, k dt over t. Um, and so now you can think about if you have a differential grade of k algebra, um, we call that map b, well, you really don't have enough information uh, to talk about how to get a map there, because this is just a zero map. So um, up here in 3, uh, more work is needed to, uh, to, to uh, uh, make sense of sort of the universal property. So this may be a trivial remark, but I think one I found he helpful in thinking about what should be the correct uh, generalization. Let's see. So now, let's see that up. Actually, um, I'll say very little about log geometry. Um, there's sort of a dictionary between log geometry and stacks. So uh, the approach um, is to define um, H, H uh, or the cyclic homology uh, for X over S for some morphism X to S. Uh, where now I want x to be an algebraic space, and this s will be an algebraic stack. Um, let me give an example of that. Um, again, sort of an easy example, but it has. Well, anyway, so let's take a smooth group scheme. 
um, over field, K. Um, and let's think about the trivial torsor, uh, which corresponds to a map from spec K down to the classifying stack uh, of the group. Um, so then uh, what you get here, the Durham complex, um, well, it's K, but it's zero map to the dual of the Lie algebra. And then you have the second exterior power of the dual Lie algebra, and so on. And this is what's, uh, I think, classically called the Chevalier um, Eilenberg complex. Um, I think you can do this for a representation too. You can take the affine space defined by the representation quotient out by the group uh, and go down. And now the main point I want to make about this is that this involves, involves uh, the Lie bracket. Um, and so even, if, okay, you may appear with, for the log point. Well, you can go to degree one and you have the notion of a log derivation. But here you have to worry even about uh, going further up in this complex, so. So, so spec A to B G is a lot of stars. Yes. Which is uh, like the universal G torsor, so it is. Uh, yeah. It is smooth. Yes. And uh, but why? How do? You, what's the relation? So it is smooth. So you just have. Uh, ah, okay. And you claim that the 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 the, the Ram complex. Is identified with this. Yes. Because you can Yeah, so maybe I should. Okay, so let me at least say why the differentials. Yeah. Ah, yeah okay, this is like the, the complex of invariant differentials. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Right, so you have this Cartesian yes. uh, product. Um, and then, so you see that the pullback of, this, uh, of the differentials here become the differentials of G. And then you have the group action. So the differentials of this over that is exactly the invariant differentials. And from that, you can also read off what this complex is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so sort of a side question here uh, is uh, how to think about is the universal property. of uh, This complex. All right, so, so in the log case, we have a good answer. It has involved log derivations and so on. Um, All right, so maybe I'll just say a word about the dictionary. Um, um, so, uh, well, if I have S, I have a fine log scheme. Um, well, then you can think about. Uh, the stack, which um, which is what does it do? Uh, an object over some s x to f, some f x to s here is uh, a fine log structure on x, and uh, this map f upper star. This is sort of an old story, but uh, uh, let me write it out anyway. Um, so that's a fiber, um, which means that, so let me, I should have had a better board work. But anyway, so that's the continuation of the two columns. Um, so that means that uh, if you have a map like this of log schemes, that's the same as a map to the stack. Um, and then the Hogshield homology of uh, 
um, will be just defined to be the Hock shield homology of x over the stack. And similarly for the cyclic homology. Find those things in the stack context. You have to. Yeah. So now that I, this is the rest of the talk. Yeah. yeah. Um. Um. Right. Okay. So uh, let's see. What OK, so maybe it's better explained by example. Um, so let's say V is a DVR, uh, pi is a uniformizer. Um, um, and let's say we have uh, F from X to spec V with this regular um, closed fiber. Uh, divisor with simple normal crossing. So let me write it as D1 dr. Um, so then uh, the basic thing to study is then uh, the stack here, which is you take the sort of local model xr minus pi, and then you portion out by the torus, so it's, um, and here the torus acts um, ui times xi for i 1 up to r minus 1, and then uh, you take the diagonal inverse on xr. OK, so you take this little sort of torque, ver torque stack. Um, and you, uh, so this is not quite the log s, but it's a tell over the other stack. So it turns out you can just work with this. And so if you take, for example, the Ram cohomology of this over that, you get the log the Ram complex. No, but here, you are looking, are you looking at the neighborhood of one point and the, the R component of the component meeting this point? Or? Yeah, so, OK, well, I didn't say that the closed point has to go to the closed point, I mean, to the to the vertex of this toric. But yeah, this is a local picture in any case. And so x is kind of smooth over the Yeah. x is smooth over this kind of local model. Right. Uh, so, well, oh, oh no. I mean, no, you don't need to do that. I mean, so I mean, if you think about a1 mod dm, yes. to give a map to this stack is a line bundle with a map to the structure sheaf. Yeah. Uh, and so if you have a divisor uh, on a scheme that's is equivalent to giving a, a map to this uh, a1 mod gm. So even though I, so I don't have to choose coordinates, but I do need it to be simple normal crossing so I can choose a line bundle for each divisor. But you, you just sort of add from x to spec v, then that means that f is generically smooth or flat, just flat. Ah, yeah, I mean, okay, I do mean it should be locally like this, yes, yeah, yeah. It should yeah. be that should be local. In local coordinates, it should look like this. It should be something smooth over the local model, which is like this. That should be the local picture. And if I put simple normal crossings, then uh, I can look at each divisor uh, and look at the line bundle given by that. And then that gives me a map to the stack, mm -hmm. to this quotient stack. No, but what I worry about, you could be divisors in many places. So the number of divisors could be used relative to the dimension. So oh, oh, oh. So yeah, OK. You're just looking at the ones that occur locally. So you, are, you, are you just? Ah, but I think that's OK, because I'm killing it off with the, you know, if, let's say I'm at a point where one of the xi's is not 0. Yes. Then it goes away, because I'm acting by the torus. Ah, OK, OK, OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 And, and, and X over V is the generic fiber smooth. So here, the, yeah. So the generic fiber is smooth. So it's it really is in local coordinates like uh, this. Yeah, I should flat. You know, there's missing adjectives. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so let me now go to sort of the general uh, uh, setup. I can start here. So, uh, so I guess to define. Well, let me. So let me start with. So uh, S, uh, I'll still work over in ring R. Will be an algebraic stack with finite diagonal. Uh, with quasi-compact diagonal, sorry. Um, uh, yes, I think I want, uh, well, I don't necessarily want the diagonal to be separated, but I want the diagonal to be of finite type. Is that what you, I forget the, so the diagonal, I think, for this thing here is not separated. I, I believe it's the diagonal is quasi-separated. <coughs> okay. Of course, it's finite type because we are working. Yeah, so you're using the very general definition of stack. Yes. Like how depending on the reference, but like in the stack for Yes. Plus those conditions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I have a map um, like this, uh, where x should be a quasi-compact at least uh, algebraic space. Um, okay, so uh, well, so then let's see. So options for uh, defining then uh, uh, x over s, and again I'll sort of carry this. Even though I didn't really define it, let me uh, carry that uh, forward. Um, OK, so, I, so three options. Let's see. I'll get to that when I need it. So option one, um, well, it's just to do descent. I mean, what do I mean? Uh, Let's see, I have, do I have 23 minutes? Is that the, yeah, yeah. okay. So, um, well, the point is simply that this complex is functorial. So if I have x over spec r, uh, spec r prime, or f x prime, uh, then you get a map, uh, g upper star, c x over r, to uh, C x prime over r prime. Um, and uh, so uh, you can choose a hypercover. So you are trying to define the, the kind of uh, naive without the right tensor for the kind of. Yes, let me, let me uh, yeah. yeah. Just this one, because for the other one, we have extra choices of which kind of machine you Yes, yes, yes. Simplicial resolution right. of some other. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's take a, a hypercover uh, with the SI, SN's uh, affine scheme, say. 
right? And then you uh, have your x, and you take your x dot, and you uh, just take level by level, see, uh, sort of, well, I'll write x dot over s dot. Um, this is a complex on this uh, simplicial scheme um, with restriction to xn, the complex um, c xn over sn. Okay, so you, I mean that's, uh, and then you have a cohomological descent problem, uh, but it turns out to be okay in this case because you have quasi-coherent cohomology sheaves, um, and so uh, uh, this descends. to uh, some complex h h x over s um, on the tau side of uh, x. Okay. And so, uh, okay, so that's, uh, then you have to uh, check independence of covers and so on. Uh, so this things is like a flat or smooth hypercover? Uh, yeah, let me do a smooth hypercover. Polyflat is okay for that one. And uh, the sense to, and so uh, this seems not. I think this descent thing will work without <coughs> those small <coughs> quasi compact and quasi separate would still work because, you no, know, of course, you, know, you work with such a black space, you are forced to use the type of yes. but then uh, you just need the chronological descent for. This and QC, and this should, should, this should work because, of, as we said, it's kind of not complete. Uh, it's certain, yeah. I mean, I, I it would not surprise me if it works no, uh, in not. general. <laughs> with quasi coherent cohomology, yes, yes. So, uh, so this has quite so this, uh, let's say, lies in D quasi coherent uh, x. No, is it the complex of all x model or just only the cohomologies are quasi coherent? Uh, 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 quasi is, um, mm. Because the complex itself, the Hoxian complex itself didn't. Oh, yes. So you have to work, I mean, yeah. So it is not. But if you think about the unbounded cohomological descent, if you put some conditions on the hi's, uh, it, it, uh, yeah. So it is not in D of OX, yeah. it is D of uh, I guess of OS. you only put R like that. Ah, and the yeah. quasi is over OX. Yeah. It's it's commodity shield set of it. Yeah. So um, okay, so that's that's option one, and one could do that. Tell me um, what is G in this in the uh, expanding two X Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, there's another approach uh, in the case when, ah, now the shadow is back. Um, so two. Um, if the diagonal of S over R is affine, then you can sort of copy the uh, case of schemes. Um, so, uh, so let me write it this way. Um, you mean the diagonal of X over S? No, of S over R. Uh, yeah, the stack over the base of my S is spec R. Yeah. So, and then x is arbitrary. Ah, yeah, okay. The, the s uh, over uh, the base is uh, r. Or okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so let me write s. I'm right. I keep writing this because if I want s to be a log scheme, I don't. R is not so good notation for a log scheme, but 
S could be anything, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so then you can uh, think about these fiber products. Um, so this is like taking the tensor product, right? So if X is affine, um, and you have various maps. So these are the BIs. Um, you can write formulas if you copy down the formulas for uh, what you do with rings. Um, and then, uh, so then if you, if X is, if you look at an affine X, then um, you have C A over S, you just define this to be the sections of X N uh, O X N. So if I take, a, yeah, so if X is affine, if X is that, um, and then you get a complex uh, using these maps. Um, uh, like this, and then you sheafify. So, okay, so now you have this, and so now for x, arbitrary, you can start looking at an affine over x, do this construction, get the complex and its functorial, and so then you can sheafify it to get a complex uh, C x over s for the Italian topology. For the topology. Um, so uh, this C s is a classical uh, cyclic complex. Uh, yeah. So so it'll be uh, yeah. In the, in the yeah. Of things. yeah. I mean, I, I, all I'm. Uh, okay. So let me let me do an example. Um, So this is closely related to the log diagonal. So uh, related to the, uh, in, uh, so let's just take A1 to A1 mod GM. So the quotient map, um, and then Xn in this case is uh, A1 with a bunch of uh, copies of the torus. Um, and so you get some complex in this case. Uh, Kt u1 plus or minus ur plus or minus and so on. Uh, okay, so it looks uh, has this nice form, um, and you yeah, and it goes on. Okay, so this is sort of the uh, in the affine in this local kind of situation. Uh, it's given in a, in a way similar, and so uh, so fact. So this gives a this gives equivalent answer, gives equivalent com gives a equivalent complex. <coughs> okay, um, to, the to the first approach, yeah. Um, okay, and now uh, well, let me go over here. So I should say, I mean, the end conclusion is that there is a theory where we have the axioms uh, that I listed above in either the log setting or sort of the setting of an algebraic space to a stack. Um, but let me go back to this question of the universal property of, uh, um, so let me go back to universal property of this omega dot x over s, um, which is then the sort of the also the third approach. Um, so the point here is to think about, sorry, let me get my notation right. So we have a fibered uh, Ital topos. So I'll write this as uh, x over s. Um, so I'll write it this way. Um, so we have the category of uh, smooth schemes, smooth 
maybe affine. Um, there are some choices there, uh, S schemes. Um, and for each uh, S in here, um, so that's a morph, maybe I should write it this way, S to S, um, I can think about the fiber product, which I'll write as X sub S, and you can think about the Vital topos on that. And that's what's called a fiber topos uh, topos uh, in the sense of SJ4. Um, I think that's the reference. Um, anyway, so it, I mean, it's, it, it's uh, not, nothing fancy really. You just take, for each scheme, you base change and you have the Atel uh, topos. So uh, a sheaf on this thing. Um, So it's sheaf. So, well, okay, and then let me write uh, x over s et al for uh, the total topos of uh, this x. So, what is it? It just, just means uh, it's a category of systems where for every s to s, you have a sheaf. Uh, Fs on uh, the x s et al. And uh, if you have a morphism s prime, maybe g to s over s, uh, and then you have a map from uh, g, well, base change up to the, to the x's, uh, g inverse Fs to Fs prime okay. on x. As prime plus they satisfy some co-cycle conditions. And, identity. <laughs> and the target identity goes identity which yes. is omitted in some places. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I should write that plus identity. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So that's that. Um, Yep. X and how many factors there were? Well, there's n plus one. N so plus one. so maybe, maybe I mean, for, maybe let me clarify. Uh, um, let me do three, okay, just <laughs> as an example. N equals two. Uh, so n is two. And so now you have sort of one, so I mean, you think of this categorically. So you have one object, and then you have a sort of arrow, which I'll write as u1 to sort of u1 x1, and then you have a second arrow, which maybe is u2, which is given by unit to uh, u1 u2 x, or maybe x, right? And so you have sort of the object plus two units. Yeah. And topology is a classic thing. Yeah, a lot of space and the, and the action of the group. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, um, well, so uh, now we have this thing, um, x over s. Um, and it has a sheaf of rings. Uh, which is just for each xs. You have oxs. Uh, it maps down to the etal topos, x etal, and it maps down to the uh, east etal topos of the stack. And I'll just write it like that. Okay. Um, and so, uh, right. And so uh, the point is. So let's call this R. So there's a little lemma. Is that uh, our upper star, our lower star, uh, define an equivalence between uh, quasi-coherent sheaves on X and uh, quasi, well, quasi-coherent sheaves on this, on this topos, which just means it's a sheaf of O modules such that each FS is a quasi-coherent sheaf, and the transition maps are isomorphisms.
Okay. The transition map in the yeah. tensor ring is this. It, with tensoring, with tensoring, yeah, of course, yes. Yeah. And that's, uh, again, sort of an exercise in flat descent. Um, so it's, um, but the point is that, uh, so in the Durham complex, we have these uh, quasi coherent sheaves, but the maps are not, uh, of course, linear. And so where should the maps live? And so one answer that at least works is to think of them in here. So uh, we can talk about, uh, well, let's see, let me write it over here. So we have a category of uh, quasi-coherent uh, commutative differential graded algebras uh, in sort of x over s. So that means, uh, uh, maybe I should give this a name, pi. So I mean, one reason to work with the small ital site there is that you can then talk about pi inverse. This is sort of well behaved. Inverse of, of the structure sheet here. Uh, what the small that you mean? The, you're referring to just. Uh, so I'm only considering the small tau side of the x sub s's. Ah, yes. Right, and so on each of those, I have the pullback of the structure sheet on s to x sub s. So I don't have. I mean, I shouldn't have. <laughs> I shouldn't really have. Uh, now, maybe I shouldn't even have discussed the Lisa Tal topology here. But anyway, I mean, the point is that um, I'm just thinking that here, I'm just using the ca it as a category. Uh, it's a fibered category. And so in this kind of language, right, for each S, I have uh, the pullback of OS to X of S, and that maps to OX. <coughs> uh, yeah, so, so, when I, um, so I can talk about quasi coherent. Uh, commutative differential graded algebras in this category, which I mean uh, that they're uh, with respect to this map of rings in the topos. Um, and the, the individual terms are quasi coherent. Um, and then uh, this has an initial object. Just take the wrong complex. So the differentials are not, but it's not the map of O. Right, so the point is that even though the, the, the notion of quasi-coherent is the same, uh, but the, there's more structure to the differentials than just looking at them as maps on. Uh, so think of the, the case of the point mapping to BG. Yes. Right, so the D is zero. And the second map is this map you get from the Lee, pair, Lee bracket. Right. Uh, so where should that, what's, where is that sort of the universal object? Mm -hmm. Right, well, as was pointed out, what you're really doing is sort of taking invariant differentials and from, a di from a something up in some higher level. So this is some formal way to for formalize that. So the, you're speaking about differential graded algebra consisting of quasi-coherent shifts in, the, in your sense. And, the, and all the structures are quasi the differential is respecting the O. No, no, differential is not. So the differentials are pi inverse OS linear. Uh, and the, the, yeah. the, the terms are, are O X over S. Yeah, like the Durham complex, right? That's, that's what it is. It's just the Durham complex in a, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm maybe, uh, I think I'm essentially out of time. So uh, maybe let me just say, at least this is a part of philosophy, but the punchline it's really, I think, uh, well, one approach to this is just to upgrade, upgrade uh, the con differential uh, uh, to get a structure, uh, which is B in this commutative DGA. And uh, I think I don't have time to say much about the cyclic homology, but you kind of do this. I mean, it's Everything is defined on very explicit complexes, so once you're in the right topos, uh, you can just follow along. So eventually, you will find some as you want. Yeah, so all the, my properties one through five hold log it. Smooth, log, log smooth. smooth. A little more, maybe. Just log smooth. 
Uh, log smooth is fine, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, d I didn't want to rewrite them because I think that would be this redundant. Uh, this gives another definition <coughs> of the... So, th so this is the third definition which of the... Equivalent to the first. Which is equivalent to the first two, yeah. yeah. And then you have, uh, you, know, you have the sequence and you can calculate some examples. Um, yeah, so, well, anyway, so I think I'm out of time, but I'm happy to show people examples. Yeah. Are there any further questions? <laughs> no. Yeah. So I suppose in the number of this case, we get the omega derived variant of that. Yes, so I think this is uh, bar graph, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah, this is this is sort of. Yeah, well, I haven't thought about it. Uh, I mean, the. You still have this I mean, intersection complex, you still have the arm complex, and then you have cascade, and you can play with Yes, yes. I mean, there was this very nice paper of, uh, I think it's Kaladin, on uh, Delini Luzi in, uh, for, well, in uh, characteristic P for cyclic homology, I think. Uh, um, so, I mean, one motivation here in the log context is that you want to compactify and then reduce. Uh, mod p and do things like this, but uh, I, I don't have anything to say with it now. So if there are no further questions, let's thank Martin again. <laughs>